Good morning. It's good to see everyone. We're going to take a look at Luke chapter 20 this morning. In light of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we're going to take a look at this. Um, I think it's quite remarkable here what's going on, what leads up to this uh, part of the of the text here in, in uh, verse 27. Well, first of all, the in, in Luke 20, it says in uh, verse 19 that the scribes and the chief priests tried to lay hands on him, that's Jesus, that very hour, and they feared the people for they understood that uh, he spoke this parable against them and they watched him and they sent spies who pretended to be righteous in order that they might catch him in some statement so they could deliver him up to the rule and authority of the governor. So they're after Jesus. They, they want him. And there's a reason for that. Uh, they see him as some sort of threat, I would say. And so in Luke chapter 20, beginning in verse 27, they come to him, it says, Now there came to him some of the Sadducees who say there is no resurrection. Now, it's interesting to me that the question is going to be about the resurrection that you don't believe in. Why ask a question about something that you do not even believe in? Right? So you despise, I don't know what make, model of a vehicle. We all have our ones that we love and then ones that we maybe loathe. And we would never consider buying that vehicle, not in a million years we may not even take one if someone gave us a brand new vehicle, although that might be a little ludicrous in my book. But, but you despise this, this vehicle that's made by this manufacturer. So why would you go look at one at a dealership? Why ask a question about the resurrection if you don't believe in it? Well, you know why. And they questioned him, verse 28, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's uh, brother dies having a wife and he is childless, his brother should take the wife and raise up offspring to his brother. And then we get into the hypothetical. I encourage you to not deal in hypotheticals when you're talking about Scripture. Deal with scripture and what it says. Don't deal in hypotheticals. Because, well, there are a lot of rabbit holes. And you'll get nowhere quick dealing with hypotheticals. So here it is. Now, now there were seven brothers. And the first took a wife and died childless. The second and the third took her and in the same way, all seven died, leaving no children. Finally, the woman died also in the resurrection, in which we do not believe in the resurrection. Which one's wife will she be? For all seven had her as wife. And Jesus said, that's the most complex question anyone has ever asked me. People in 2021 will say, that is, well, that's quite, uh, well, how, how can anyone understand this? Oh my, really? This is quite a predicament that, that God is in here. I mean, how do you work this out? No, Jesus said to them, the sons of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy to attain that age 
and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, for neither can they die anymore. For they are like the angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. But that the dead are raised, even Moses showed in the passage about the burning bush, where he calls the the Lord, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Now, he is not the God of the dead, but of the living for all live to him. And some of the scribes answered, teacher, you've spoken well. I mean, wow, you really I don't know how you pulled that out, but wow, that's great. Paraphrase, obviously. For they did not have courage. They didn't have courage. They had courage to ask the first question. How in the world can God sort this mess out? But they did not have courage to question him any longer about anything. So they weren't going to go anywhere with anything else. And he said to them, Jesus says to them, how is it that They say that Christ is David's son. Chew on that one for a while. How is that? For David himself says in the book of Psalms, the Lord said to my Lord, set at my right hand until I make thine enemies a footstool for thy feet. David therefore calls him Lord. And how is he his son? Question mark. So Jesus gets a question in here. Bigger fish to fry than whose wife will she be in the resurrection, right? In verse 45, and while all the people were listening, he said to the disciples. So sort of a a sidebar here, right? But everyone can hear. Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and love respectful greetings in the marketplaces and the chief seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets who devour widows houses and for appearance sake offer long prayers. These will receive greater condemnation. Okay. So let's go back in this. Considered worthy. Look at verse 35. Now they ask the question about the resurrection and all of this. But Jesus says, but to those who are considered worthy to attain to that age and the resurrection from the dead. So. How are we considered worthy for that? How do you get worthy of Being in this group of people, I want to be there, don't you? I mean, I want to attain to that. Resurrection from the dead. I want I want that to take place with me. So let's look at Romans chapter six. In Romans chapter six. Romans chapter six. Verses 1 through 11. Now, Paul says this. Now, pay attention to the resurrection of Jesus. How do we attain to that? I mean, how do we follow Jesus in this? Paul says, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may increase? May it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that? All of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death. Okay. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death in order that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. There you go. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also we certainly we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, 
that our old selves are crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer has mastery over him for the death he died. Uh, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. So do you want to be in that group that Jesus talks about? You want to be considered worthy? Then follow Jesus in this way. Ephesians chapter 4. It's, there's an interesting um, passage here. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, entreat you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. So, how are we considered worthy? Well, we believe what Jesus says. We follow him in baptism as Paul is talking about. We're raised to this new life. And what do we do with this new life? Well, Paul talks about um, things like uh, verse two of, of chapter four of Ephesians with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing forbearance, to one another in love, be diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Therefore, there is one body, one spirit, just as you were called into one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is over all and through all and in all. But each of us but each one of us, grace has been given according to the measure of Christ's gift. And so he goes on to talk about how he gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets and some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints. He talks about that. And then verse 17, this I, I say, therefore, and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the hardness of their hearts. And they've become calloused. They have given themselves over to sensuality. But verse 20, but you did not learn Christ in this way. And so Ephesians 4 is the how to. How, how do you live? How do you live this worthy life? Read what Paul says in Ephesians and start thinking about that and start living like that. Um, in verse 38, back in uh, Luke chapter 20, in verse 38, <clears throat> says, uh, Now he is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living, for all live to him. And we go back to Romans Chapter six, verse 11, that we're dead to sin and we're alive in Christ. He makes us alive. And so we are alive and we will remain alive. Jesus talks about, well, we'll get to that in just a moment. So verses 41 through 44, take a look at this. He, he asked them this question about uh, who is this? Who is this person? You see, they were doubting that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah. They had no. Um, they had no. Belief that he was uh, the one that was going to save them, die on the cross for their sins. And so he says in verse 44, David, therefore, calls him Lord. And how is he his son? So he puts things back in their court. I want you to think about this because this is the greater thing to think about. You want to figure out whose wife she'll be and all that? Jesus says he, he gave sort of a quick answer. I mean, if God, if you're asking God how this would go, surely he would know. And so he does. But we will spend lots of time. 
We can spend much more time on that convoluted question that they asked than the other part. This is what Jesus is getting at. He is the Messiah. He is the one that saves. He is God in flesh. And that's what they weren't believing. So the Sadducees, these non-believers in the resurrection, Jesus asks them this question. Now, take a look at verses 46 through 47. This is the little sidebar, although, you know, usually a sidebar that everyone in the courtroom doesn't get to hear. It's just the, the judge and the attorneys and all that. Right. But Jesus, it says, uh, while he while all the people were listening. So everyone's hearing what he's saying. He said to the disciples. So they hear what he's saying. He says, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and love respectful greetings in the marketplaces. He's talking about them, right? The, ask, the, the ones that asked the question in the first place. So they like to walk around in the market and, the, and get the greetings. And the, they like to have the, the chief seats in the, in the synagogue and in the, in the places of honor at banquets. And they, they devour widows' houses and uh, meant that they probably had a little bit of coin in their pockets um, after they got done uh, taking care of these widows, right? Or, uh, well, Jesus says, and devour widows' houses and for appearance sake offer long prayers. These will receive greater condemnation. So here's the sidebar that Jesus is... is, uh, is uh, engaged in with his disciples and they're listening to him. Beware of these people. The ones right here, beware of them. Beware of what they're doing. They they love respect. They love honor and they love praise. They devour widows houses, which is in direct violation of. Of what James says in James chapter 1 verse 27. This is pure and undefiled religion. In the sight of our God and Father. To visit the orphans and widows in their distress. Not to devour them. And what they had left. Jesus says. This is what they love to do. They pray for appearance sake. Long prayers. Wordy prayers. Jesus says there's greater condemnation for these folks. So some would say, well, is there greater condemnation for some rather than others? If there is, according to Jesus, these people are the ones that are involved in the greater condemnation because of what they're doing. They come to Jesus and question him about the resurrection has nothing to do with it. They just want him dead. And he will be dead on a cross, buried in a tomb, resurrected so that they could even have life in him. So be careful who you listen to. Maybe that's the that's the thing that we should latch on to. Be careful who you listen to. Pay attention to Jesus. Pay attention to Jesus. Read Romans six. Read Romans four or Ephesians four. Get it right. Because Jesus says in John chapter 11, verses twenty five and twenty six. And this is at the death of Lazarus. Um, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? So Jesus says in Luke chapter 13, verse 3, that unless you repent, You'll perish. He doesn't want that. That's why he's saying that. He wants people to repent. Mark 16, 16. 
A person that believes in Jesus and is baptized will be saved. It's what Jesus says. And he would want us to live a worthy life because that's what he's calling for when he's talking to these Sadducees, this group here. When he, uh, when he says to them that... Uh, People, people aren't going to die if uh, uh, they'd be like the angels. Um, the dead are uh, the dead are raised, and Jesus is pointing out to them that this is exactly the point of well, it's the point of what he's going to be doing soon. They want to capture him. They want to kill him. For what reason? They just want to get him out of the way because they don't want him to become more powerful than they are. We know Jesus reveals their heart, what they're after. And so we don't live like this. We we become people that are considered worthy. And how do we do that? Well, we follow Jesus. We follow Jesus. We live a life that's worthy. And that's not something that's unattainable. Listen, as a Christian, if you're already a Christian, you go to to uh, first John chapter one and you see where John says that if if we sin, we confess and he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, purify us from all unrighteousness. So God has arranged it so that the death and the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the blood of Christ that was Spilled on the cross. That sacrifice can keep you pure, can keep you clean, but you have to be willing to walk with him, in him, worthy. And that is something that we can do because all we have to do is walk with Jesus. You're not going to be perfect even after you're a Christian. That's why you need Jesus. Amen. So if you need him this morning, if you need to put him on in baptism, why don't you this morning as we stand and sing?